do you support uh, the, the way your policy is written? It seems to be used against reporters who want to cover civic events. So you've seen this series where the Colorado Springs Library system tries to discourage me from filming its board meeting. We're talking about a public library. They want me to get permission to film inside the area where the board meeting's happening, one of their libraries, after maybe six bureaucrats approach me with uh, questions about why I'm there or demands that I stop filming and so forth. Yeah, maybe it was more like four. Eventually they decided to just give me permission even though I refused to ask for it. And so now I can film outside and inside the board meeting, funded by taxpayers. But it, apparently, if I recall correctly, all of the board members refused to, to talk to me, basically. And here's the last one. The meeting went on for three hours, then they sat around and ate food for another hour stood around and ate food. So it was like a four hour thing. I was there an hour before it started. So I was there for five hours and having gotten really no answers from any board members, unless I'm missing something, I figured this last board member, I'm gonna do my best to at least make sure the questioning lasts longer than 10 seconds. Are you on the board? Are you on the board? Question for you. Uh, I've had the police called on me twice for trying to film civic events like this. Do you support uh, the, the way your policy is written? It seems to be used against reporters who want to cover civic events. I think it's against people that don't show their uh, kindness and uh, genuine. Against what? Understanding how to do things. Against what? What authority do you have to stop people from filming in the library? Civic events. And am I forced to pay your salary? So, other thoughts related to this library. Sand Creek Public Library, Pikes Peak Library District. Uh, the library, actually inside, it was it felt pretty safe. Considering this is a relatively bad neighborhood, staff appeared to be helpful to other people. Although this was the second time out of three visits, camera wielding ambush interview type visits, where the library tried to stop me from filming, or at least intimidate me into not filming without permission, I felt that this was the, the right approach. I can spend all year going to meetings as a member of the public, pleading, uh, you know, requesting that they change their policy and let people film without uh, asking permission, at least if they're at a, a civic event and they're not bothering bystanders. I wouldn't have gotten anywhere doing that, probably, and at the end of it, I would have had nothing interesting to show you. Governments react to outcry and publicity, so I just jump straight to that when I'm dealing with governments. I don't go through their process. I guess it's uh, asymmetric politics, guerrilla politics. And the right to record is a, a winning issue that is interesting to people. They'll watch a video about that. They will not watch a video of a meeting, <laughs> unless maybe someone in the meeting loses it or someone in the meeting is, tries to stop you from filming it. The other benefit of just jumping straight to the camera is uh, that it causes them to be cautious in the future. So this library made a policy that was stupid that says, you, you, you know, you gotta get permission to film in the library. They didn't think through the consequences to reporters. They imposed those consequences on me in 2016 by ordering me out of the library where an anti-Trump event was occurring, calling the police who told me I couldn't go back in, at least not that day. Uh, there's a there's a price for for doing something like that, writing a policy like that, and then having it enforced, and then you know not changing the policy for three years. At least there was no major change I could see. The price in 2016 was they got a million hits against them. Uh, a million people watched the videos of what they had done. Their security people tried to have the videos taken down. 
By appealing to Google, this was admitted by library staff later on in an interview with a different press organization about the incident. Then three years later, they had to, to lose their minds in front of the camera again. However, many of those different bureaucrats, you know, paraded in front of the camera, tried to try and either stop me from filming or interrogate me. They didn't want me filming them. They took my tax dollars. They took everyone's tax dollars in the United States. They're paying the price. Maybe the original sin was to accept the stolen property. Maybe they should think about that before they do it. Maybe the next time they're writing a policy, they will stop and think, hmm, if we were to actually enforce this, would the public maybe have a problem with it? Would someone maybe, I don't know, get hurt? Because we have to call the police, and sometimes the police kill people for no particular reason. They kill a thousand Americans a year, while the German police kill three. By the way, they were filming me this entire time that they told me I couldn't film. At least, that's what I think those things were up there that looked like cameras on their ceiling. If they weren't cameras, they were designed to make everyone think they were cameras. You know, and if someone had come, if one of their security people or any one of, of their people had just come up to me and said, you know, we do ask that you not film patrons and that, would you be willing to blur their, them out? Uh, if that had been all they asked, I don't think there would have been that much of an issue. I don't like having to blur out patrons. It's extra work. But the problem is they were trying to stop me from filming the interaction about whether I can film. That is the most interact, interesting interaction of any civic event. You will never go to a civic event, probably, and film the event itself and come away with something more interesting than someone walking up to you and trying to negotiate with you about whether you can film. The latter is always, almost, more interesting. And that is what the Ridley Report is here for, making civics interesting, one ambush interview at a time. Egypt people is very nice, and if the Egypt people take my advice, they will strike down the one party state they fear. But that had better not happen here, because we know that everything would fall apart if the city of Keene, New Hampshire starts to listen to the malcontents at Free Keen and sort of kind of cut spending cause the government needs some expensive things like the wasteful 34 West building and the boondoggle jail where we put hat wearers and other people who could be considered swearers freaking.com